You guys constantly ask for tips on how to shrink your pores, but the truth is, you can't really change the size of your pores, but you can change the appearance of them. So today, we're gonna talk all about pores. First, let's just talk about pores in general because there's a lot to know about them. We have two main types of pores, the ones that really matter to us. There are sweat pores, and then there are oil pores, and those are also known as our hair follicles. Sweat pores are small, so they tend to not be the ones that bother us. It's the oil pores, the hair follicles, that can get clogged and that can cause acne. So that's usually what we're talking about. Now, when it comes to the size of your pores, the two main factors are age and genetics. Genetics being, look at your mom, look at your dad, look at other people you're related to. If they tend to have big pores, you probably are gonna have big pores too because it's genetic. Second, when it comes to aging, it's all about that collagen and elastin that holds your, your skin together. So obviously when you're a baby, you don't have huge pores because you don't have the sagging that starts to happen. And if you think about like your pores, they start to get floppy, I guess. I almost like imagine, you know, like if you were to hold up, like if you were to make like a little ring with Play-Doh. See, I talk about Play-Doh and stuff because my toddler plays with Play-Doh right now. But you make like a, a little, like a ring circle with Play-Doh, and then you were to hold it up, it starts to get heavy over time. Instead of like looking like a nice round circle, it starts to look more like an oval, and it starts to look larger. So it's not even that your pore is larger, it's just that it doesn't have the stability anymore to hold it up and make it look like a nice tight round pore. Fortunately, there are treatments that can help you with your collagen and with your elastin, and to make you look like your skin is a little bit tighter, and that always helps hold the structure up of your pores. So those are things to look into with your dermatologist's office is maybe there's like a laser or some kind of treatment that can help you tighten that whole area. But if you're not aging that much, like if you're in your 20s and you're dealing with what looks like large pores, then you might actually be dealing with clogged pores. And that's usually what I find people are talking about when they say that they have a problem with their pores. Maybe they're like, they wanna shrink their pores or they want to you know, make their pores less noticeable. Usually they're dealing with clogged pores. And there are a lot of mistakes that we make that cause our pores to look clogged. And then when it comes to opening and closing your pores, you hear that reference a lot. Like you'll say, you'll hear people say like, using a toner opens your pores. You can't open and close your pores either. What you can do is loosen the oil and unclog your pores. It might seem like they're opening and closing, but they're not technically opening and closing. You can't do that with your pores. You can unclog them or you can loosen the oil that's inside them. So what I tend to find is people that ask me how they can shrink their pores, what they're really referring to is how can they unclog their pores. They're dealing with clogged pores. Whether that's blackheads or whiteheads or some type of acne, it's usually a clogged pore that they have an issue with. And obviously there's so much more to know about pores and we could talk about this for hours, but that's the gist of it. You can't open and close your pores and you can't change the size of them. But you might be making some mistakes that make your pores look larger or clog your pores. So let's talk about those. So the biggest mistake I think most of us make, myself included, I used to make this mistake all the time, is I use products that have comedogenic ingredients. And what I mean by comedogenic is they clog your pores or they cause your pores to get clogged. One of the types of products that we tend to buy that do this are products that actually are geared towards shrinking our pores. So whenever you see shrink your pores on the marketing or the packaging of a product, what it's probably doing is creating a band-aid that's gonna fill in the pores and then make it look like your skin is smoother and make your pores look like they are smaller or tighter. Um, but what it's really doing is just creating that band-aid. So while something like silicone, for instance, might be creating like that temporary band-aid and make your skin look smoother because it's filling in your pores, what happens is it's trapping bacteria or maybe even oil. And so it's actually causing your pores to get more clogged over time. It's not everybody. Some people do totally fine with silicone and there is silicone in so many products but what I find is when I use too many products that have silicone in it, this is what starts to happen to my skin over time. Maybe not like using it once or twice in a row, but if I use a lot of silicone-based products over a month or so, then you really start to see a difference in my skin and in my pores. They just look so much more clogged. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't wanna constantly fill them in. You're creating this band-aid that's actually making it worse over time. You also want to stay away from ingredients like coconut oil. I talk about this all the time. If you're dealing with clogged pores, then look at the ingredients you're using. Are you using coconut oil? Are you using cocoa butter? Are you using lanolin cream? These are all ingredients that are used in a lot of creams, but they might not be good for your skin. And we always talk about this. You want to test things out, but what you might be causing is clogged pores because they're too rich or too nourishing for your skin. And that's why it's 
a little bit different when you use products like that or ingredients like that on your body. The pores on your body are a little bit different than the ones on your face. So sometimes the pores on your body can handle it, but the pores on your face can't. So be suspicious of products that say that they shrink pores because they're probably gonna contain ingredients that clog your pores over time. And also look for non-comedogenic on the labels of these products. Non-comedogenic isn't really a regulated term, but it tends to mean that it doesn't include ingredients that are gonna clog your pores, or at least that's what it's been tested for. Is it a guarantee? You know, it's the beauty industry. We've talked about this. There are a lot of misleading labels, but chances are, the ingredients in this product are not gonna clog your pores. All right, another mistake that we potentially make, I know a lot of us make, is we spend either too much time in the sun and or we don't use our SPF. So you guys hear me talk about SPF all the time and why you should use it. And I think it comes down to two main things in our minds. We either don't wanna get hyperpigmentation or melasma or we don't wanna get wrinkles, but guess what? If you have a problem with your pores, then it could be that you're spending too much time in the sun and not protecting your skin because I talked about this, aging, is related to the loss of collagen, the loss of elastin, and if you're in the sun, you are losing more collagen, you're losing more of the elasticity in your skin, and that can make your pores look larger because they start to stretch with your skin. So as your skin starts to sag, your pores start to sag, and so they look like they're larger. So that's something to keep in mind. You're not just wearing your SPF and avoiding the sun so you can avoid hyperpigmentation and wrinkles. You also wanna make sure your pores look like they're tighter and they're younger and smoother. And that is one of the main reasons why you wanna wear SPF. That's why SPF is such a big part of a skincare routine. The next mistake you could be making is you don't exfoliate. It's funny because I either meet people who over exfoliate and then I meet people who don't exfoliate. It's one of those weird things where it's like, no one seems to be doing it just enough. You know, you have to have the right amount of exfoliation and there's, you know, there's like a balance to it. You're constantly trying to balance not over exfoliating, but exfoliating just enough. Because when you are getting clogged pores, the only way to really unclog them is to exfoliate. And that's with either a physical exfoliation or with a chemical exfoliation, which tends to be my preferred choice of exfoliating. I tend to do that at least five times a week. I use some kind of chemical exfoliator in the form of a toner. And I find that that really helps unclog my pores. And whenever you guys are like, oh, your skin's pretty poreless. It's because I really got serious about my exfoliation. And you know what else I got serious about? I got serious about seeing my esthetician and getting a regular facial. Even if it's going in like every couple of months to see an esthetician who can unclog your pores for you and help clean out your skin, it's very helpful to do that because you get all this congestion and buildup over time and there's from pollution, the sun, the products you're using, just everything. And so to have somebody manually go in there and help clear out your pores is always so helpful. And if you think about it, when you leave like for instance, blackheads in your pores too long. Like you, we've all seen that person. It's usually a guy. <laughs> we've all seen that guy who has a huge blackhead on his nose and you're like, man, I can't believe that guy hasn't popped it or like, you know, like squeezed it out. Cause you're like, oh, I gotta get that. But think about how that's been sitting there and just ru it's like ruining the structure of that pore because it's just stretching it out and it's keeping it like that. And it's keeping it dilated and open and stuff open. See, it's so easy to just say those words when you're referring to pores, but what you're doing is you're just letting it stay there. And so it just makes your pores worse. You're ruining that structure, that collagen and that elastin that keeps your pores tight. All right. So another mistake that we tend to make is we don't balance our oil production. And that's another one. It's like exfoliation where it's very personal. You have to kind of play around with it to really figure out that balancing act for your skin. Some people are more oily, some people are more dry. But what tends to happen is if we have too much oil production, then it's clogging our pores. But if we try to remove too much of that oil, then our skin starts to overcompensate and create even more oil. And so then it clogs our pores too. So you're trying to find that balancing act where you nourish your skin, you keep it hydrated, but it's not overly producing oil. And what we tend to find is when you over exfoliate or you use products like the pore shrinking products or even something like blotting papers. Those were huge for a second there. I was very guilty of using them all the time. I'd like pull out a blotting paper or, or I'd pull out my powder compact and dab my skin constantly to try to get that excess oil off. But what happens is your skin starts to overcompensate because it's producing that oil because it feels like it needs it and then you're going and removing it, and so it's gonna produce even more. You're trying to find this balancing act of just nourishing your skin and keeping it hydrated and making sure that the oil production isn't too much. So you don't want to ever skip 
moisturizer. And that's something that I find with people who have oily skin is they say that they skip moisturizer and they probably went through and like stripped their skin completely too. And then they're like, oh, I don't use moisturizer because my skin is oily. Well, your skin is oily because your skin is trying to overcompensate because it needs something to nourish it now. And so it's producing that oil. Also, whenever I say like, don't strip your skin and it's the reason why I love a double cleanse where I start with an oil cleanser that's very gentle on your skin, doesn't strip anything. And then an, a really gentle cleanser afterwards the reason I say that is because you don't want that tight feeling on your skin because the minute that your skin starts feeling tight like that it signals to your oil glands to produce more oil so you're trying to find this balancing act it's not easy it's taken me years to get that balancing act but it's something to be very aware of and then what you're eating can also play a big part in your oil production. Sugar, for instance, if you eat too much sugar, it spikes insulin. Insulin spikes inflammation. It's just really bad for your skin in general. Like inflammation is just bad for your skin. You, t you hear me talk about this all the time. I always tell you to be gentle with your skin, to not use ingredients that make it really red, to not do anything that's gonna make your skin become inflamed, and sugar actually does that. So it's just aging your skin in general. I am so guilty of eating a lot of sugar. I have a sweet tooth, so I'm always very aware of this when I'm, when I'm eating it, but sugar is something to keep in mind. If you're having problems with your pores and acne, then maybe look at the sugar that you're eating, the amount of it. It's in so many of the food items that we eat these days and we use so much sugar in like our drinks and even in things like in our salad dressings. Like you might be trying to eat healthy salads every single day for lunch, but you might have a salad dressing that's packed with sugar. So keep that in mind. Sugar can cause that inflammation and then that inflammation leads to more oil production and clogged pores. There's also alcohol and alcohol, you're dealing with a lot of sugar, and you're also dealing with dehydration. So I've talked about how you don't wanna strip your skin because it causes that oil production again. Same with dehydration. If you're not drinking enough water, if you're drinking too much alcohol, it's dehydrating your skin, and your skin tries to overcompensate that. So all of that to say, I know it's like so depressing, right? <laughs> it's like you think about all the things that you're doing, you're probably doing most of it, and it's causing your pores to get clogged and congested, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And I talk about it all the time, it's retinoids, whether it's like retinol, retin-A, any kind of vitamin A derivative is going to help with collagen production. And I've talked about this earlier in this video, collagen production is really good for your skin. That's why babies and little kids have really nice skin is because they have that great collagen, that great elasticity in their skin. And so retinol and retinoids help to build that collagen in your skin. It's one of the only ingredients that's been proven to truly, truly do this. So besides it, like unclogging your pores and helping with hyperpigmentation and just all of the other amazing things that retinoids do for your skin, they also help with the collagen and that collagen is gonna help the structure of your pores. So then they appear much tighter and smoother. So that is the gist of pores. Like I said, there's so much more we can talk about. If there's something that I left out that you think that I should have mentioned, obviously tell me in the comments. I love how educated you guys are on skincare. I feel like there's so many people that watch our channel and watch the videos on this channel to learn so much more about skincare. So if you've got anything to add to it, please add to it in the comments. Find me in our private Facebook group. It's called Beauty and Wellness Questions Answered. I'm also on Instagram and on Twitter at Susan Yara, and I'll talk to you guys soon.